And you believe it's Sunday already? I know. I want another weekend. <laughs> I'm sure you do too. Sadly, we can't offer you a new weekend. All it takes is a slice of light. We just joined with some more of creation. Right here at the hidden beauty of Ekailu Tolo Stables in Sardinia Bay. We kick off today's show by exploring the largest mission station in Port Elizabeth. They share their work through the power of the Holy Spirit and recycled plastic. Dana, Fons and Samlar flee near and I schrijf my trick. Daily slides on mood for Jordan van Eden. Then the healing power of drawing and one woman's dream for this therapy to change futures. Sibabona Koko Michale, Abandu Mimi is Robotsini, Balambili, Abanda Yoksal, who can owns Hella Help. As seen in Nelson Mandela Bible, there is one shelter which stands out for its size, scope, and its Christian ethos. Visitor's Mission Station is the largest shelter in the metro. They aim to uplift the broken, rebuilding mind, body and spirit with the guidance of Almighty God. South Afrikaans is, well, amper te da al gewoond om mense te sien wat by die robot speel. Wat het deel laat besluit om met die situasie aan te pak? Ons was in 1998 in ons kerk ge... ge challenge om een verschil te maak. Die dominee of die pastoor op die stadium het, het basis gesê dat ons allemaal geroep is om een verschil te maak. En um, wat is jou nalatenskap? As jy morgen nie daar is nie, gaan dat een verschil wees, gaan mense jou mis. En dit het ons laat besef, ons wil ook weet, wat is ons werkelijke roeping in die leven? Um, in ons het het gaan soek, ons het die Heerese aangezoek gaan soek, om te hoor wat is sy wil vir ons leven, wat, wat die verskil moet ons maak. Kuebus en Lynette heard about Vistra's mission, which was very small, and in desperate need of professional management. They went to investigate. En die dag toos hier so instap en so, en ons kan sien die nood wat hier so is in, 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 in Port Elisabeth, en selfs in die plek, jy weet, uh, die mense die, 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 Die systeem het nie gewerkt nie, jou riool het nie gewerkt nie, daar was die water nie, daar was die kracht nie. En die mens het sommer net vier gemaak, oorals om die gebouw en so aan. En dit was een groot punt geweest wat, wat aangepas het om te sê, ja, kom ons gemaak een verskil in Port Elisabeth. So how did it change from no water or power to the working mission station we see today? Aanvankelijk het ons nie rare geweet wat ons hier doen nie, want ons kom uit een bezigheidsachtergrond... Um, Ons het nie geweet, ons het nie maatskapelike achtergronde of maatskapelike werk achtergronde of sielkunde achtergronde nie. Maar wat die Heere vir ons gesê het is, gaan wees net lief vir die mense. Moe nie inloop met die bybel onder die arm nie, gaan wees net lief vir die mense. En dis wat ons gedoen het, ons het ingekom, ons het na die mense sy stories geluister, ons het tyd met hulle gespandeer, hulle het onder ons velle ingekryp, um, En het was seker, seker een goeie twee, drie jaar later waar hulle vir ons gevra het, maar kan hulle nie die dienst hier aangebied kry nie? Kan hulle nie meer leer oor die heren nie? So aanvankelijk was dit net een kwestie van, ja, hier die vreselike groot gebouwe, maar is asof jy dier die strooikie kyk dan, want die, die, dit wat gebeur het oor 20 jaar, het ons nie voorsien nie. Ons het nooit gedink, wist dat is gaan groei na waar dit is vandag nie. Ons het net gewet, ons moet kom en ons moet vir mense lief wees. Dis al wat ons geweet het. Op die oomlik is daar so op die perseel so, so 350, 380 mense wat die so bly. En um, van daai is by die 200 samentlik kinders is, is een heeltemaal werkloos. Ons noem het die werkloose mense nie. Ons noem het personeel. Dit is personeel wat ons hulle invat op personeel. Nee, die mense wat ons invat um, sit ons op die program. Dit is een drie maanden program en dit is een zes maanden program. So, al wat is verwacht van die mens wat inkom, is om hulle leven te verander en weer aan te gaan in hulle in, in die toekomst. Feeding and housing close to 400 people. Where do they find the money? Um, ons krijg nie geld van die, 
van, uh, van die staat af niet. So, ons is zelf onderhoudend. Ons het werkschippingsprojecten, ons doen houtwerkprojecten, ons doen, ons het stenen gemaakt in die verleden, ons doen so'n klein beetje prefab hier op die, op die oomlik. Um, die grootste inkomst uit ons kruip die oomlik is uh, van ons plastische recycling, herwinning van, van plastische producten, waar ons contracten bij verschillende fabriek, fabrieken het, en dan vat ons dit en ons verwerk het en dan tot op die punt waar ons het weer gaan verkoop. So dit is waar die bevondsing kom van die, van die centrum, van die Sendingstatie. How does one qualify to become a, a member of the Visteras family? As die mense hier is en hulle is hier om hulle leven te verander, omdat hulle moeg is versikkel, omdat hulle moeg is om verslaaf te wees, dan kan ons met hulle werk. As hulle hier is omdat hulle die rechte visie het vir hulle toekomst, dat, 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 dat daar een verskil moet kom, dan kan ons werk met hulle. So, indien nou bed beskikbaar is en iemand het in nood, dan neem ons hulle in. Megan spoke to the residents. What has your experience been like here at Vistaris? As a, as a groot familie is eindelijk soos a gemeenskap, soos a eie, barrieres en oorres en almal is broer en sisters die van ons, almal is af van mekaar. Ja, ek, ek verwees gereeld na Vistaris as die republiek van Vistaris, want het voel raar as a klein stad op sy eie. Daar is genade. En dis die ding, dis die ding van Vistaris, die evangelie functioneer hier so, met al sy gebroke mense, en al sy tekorte, en al sy krake, en al sy politiek, en al sy menselijkheid, en al ons goeders, die genade van Jesus functioneer hier, want die evangelie functioneer hier so, en dit is wat hoop gee. Shul told us about finding his place at Vistaris. Ja, just also the sense of belonging, like I said, you know, um, just given the chance to actually prove who you really are, finding yourself in the Lord, finding yourself, grounding yourself, and actually just doing what you want. I work with the children here. I work at the creche. We've got about 16 kids in the creche, and I do aftercare with, with the bigger children that are from grade R until uh, matric. We've got about 50 kids all in all. You know, and it's quite a big responsibility, and I thoroughly enjoy it there. You know, a lot of the kids here are with single parents, uh, either a mom or a dad, or they don't have been there through their lives. My job where I find it's relatively easy just being a father to, to these kids, um, just giving them the love that, they, that they're really looking for. You know, um, teaching them a little bit of discipline where they've been just let loose. You know, just teaching them that lying is not good, stealing is not good, swearing is not good. Also teaching them a little bit about the Bible, you know, um, doing a little bit of, just a bit of nurturing. Yeah, you know, they just all grow on me. I mean, I walk down the passages every day or every night during the day and they just all come and crowd all over me. I mean, it's just, it just fills that, that gap that you've had in your life. All this time as well, yeah. And we see also the skills in people, so they all have for the Lord given. You know, they have disciplines and disciplines. They have belief, where they can fast, they can fast in the word. And this is where you see the success of people. As they have really been in the years and years and years. And they are honest in what they do. So Vistar is a rare place where the Lord is built. We don't have to build it. We were a good place to us. And that's it. Ons, ons het gekom, ons het geluister na hom, en hy doen die werk hier. Hy maak die verskil. Visteris is a place to belong, a place to become. Hoe vervul jylle hierdie belofte? Weet jy, ons het achtergekom oor die jare, dat as mense hier aankom, dan het hulle alles verloor. Hulle het nie, hulle familie het hulle afgeskryf. Um, die, die, die mense wat verslaaf is, het soveel, soveel van hulle familie se goed gaan verkoop dat hulle op een stadium met die tough love uh, idee van, nou is ons klaar met jou, moes hulle voor die ding te staan kom. So hulle het alles verloor. En aan die einde van die dag, ons allemaal het nodig om te behoort aan, aan, aan iets. So, ek dink ons het daarin geslaag om oor 20 jaar een gevoel van familie te skep by Wisteris. Elke werksopzet, elke uh, gang waar die mense bly, elke um, dormetrie waar die, die manne en die vrouwe bly, is daar leiers. En die leiers is, is dier een jaar van, van opleiding. So hulle is daar om die mense te dien. Maar hulle is ook daar om die maan pa rolle te vervul in mense se leven. So dat hulle weet hulle behoort aan een familie. We see the love of Christ all over the Visterous Mission. How do they share that? Weet jy, wanneer mense kom, dan vraag ons nie, wat is jou geloof nie? On, ons wees hulle nie weg nie, want ons voel ons met die liefde deel. 
Um, in, 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 in ons land op hierdie stadium is daar so groot gebrek aan hoop. Die mens het alle hoop verloor. En die enigste hoop wat ons het is in Jesus. Ons kan nie kyk na die regering om dinge vir ons te verander nie. Ons kan nie kyk na ander mense om dinge te verander nie. Maar die Heere, in die Heere is daar altyd hoop. Hy, hy is ons enigste hoop. En hy is die een wat hulle uit die donker gaat waar hulle is, moet uithaal en hulle, en hulle weer die licht te laat sien. So ek geloof ons as kinders van die Heere is geroep om sout en licht te wees en om, om bringers van hoop te wees. Ek sê altyd, we have to breathe hope. Want dit is, dit is, dit is al wat hierdie, vir hierdie mense enig iets gaan beteken. En die realiteit is, as jy uit een erge dwelm verslaving kom soos heroin, sielkunde en pille gaan jou nie help nie. Nee, die heren kan jou help. I've lived in the metro my whole life and I had no idea about the awesome work done by the Vistra's mission. Hmm. When we come back, Daily Slice takes to the skies with Jordan van Eerden. When most of us were at school, our biggest concerns were tax shop queues and math homework. Fix recently met up with a schoolboy who, despite being in his carefree years, has notched up some remarkable achievements. This week, Daily Slice met him a trick pupil. He lists becoming head boy and a pilot as high points in his young life. But his most life-changing event came about when he was just 16. Jordan, when you were 16, you decided to fundraise for a young man with cancer. Why did you do that? Well, um, you know, my mom brought me this newspaper clipping, an article about Jason. And in that article, it was kind of his story and people that had met him and spoken about him. And when I was reading that, I realized this guy's 16. He's, he's my age. And I think something inside me kind of thought, how how are you a 16 year old and you're dealing with something like this? An illness that's terminal to so many people. Um, and it kind of just struck something in me that was like, sure, this isn't, he doesn't have life the way you have it. And what can you do to help? So what did you do? Like, you know, tell us about the fundraising. When you have a medical issue, bills are always the struggle. And we thought, what if this is something we could help with? Um, so my mom and I, we actually started brainstorming a little bit about it. And we thought, okay, sure, what if, what if we went the way I felt, what if we could make other people feel like that? What if I went from schools to schools, speaking to people my age and his age, trying to just bring out that same kind of, that feeling, the, the want to help somebody else. So it was an amazing experience, seeing people kind of open themselves up to this and being willing to give. Something scary about it was walking into schools that are a lot bigger than mine um, and having to kind of deal with the fact that, sure, I need to address these people. But God guided Jordan through the daunting challenge of public speaking. So that was something I struggled with, but I mean, walking into one of PE's biggest schools and feeling complete peace was an amazing experience. And in my own school, I spoke to the group of grade sevens. And when I was done speaking to them, a little girl came forward with all her lunch money. And she said, this is all I have, but I want him to have it. And that to me was like, that just said everything I was doing. It spoke, it summed everything up. How much money did you raise? We raised over 105,000 rand. The journey started off and we thought, what if, what if we could raise 16,000? Poetic, you know, 16, we're ages 16, 16,000. And it was like, no, 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 that, that's, uh, that's not aiming high enough. And so we just kept going and the money kept coming in. It was really an amazing experience. We handed a check over to Jason and his family. And after that, the, the Herald Live put something on Facebook and they kind of caught wind of it and they ran with it a little bit. After that, we received a whole bunch of more, you know, just from people going, we didn't hear the story before, but we've heard it now and we want to give as well. So again, people just opening their hearts. I understand this whole experience has brought your family as well as Jason's family closer together. How did that happen? My mom connected to Jason's mom so quickly and I connected with Jason immediately. We liked all the same things. And Jason was amazing because there was never a moment where he felt sorry for himself. There was always the biggest smile on his face and he had the biggest amount of energy all the time. For somebody that was sick, you would never have guessed it looking at him. So, um, you know, I think our families gelled together really nicely and because him and I gelled together so well, that really helped as well. Though sadly, Jason succumbed to the cancer. Jordan is forever changed by their relationship. Tell us about your, your journey through faith, um, about your day-to-day -day 
relationship with Christ? You know, my relationship with Christ on a day-to-day basis isn't, it's something that I always know that is there to fall back on when I need it because I know that it's strong and that it's there. And honestly, Jason taught me a lot about that. Him being so brave and never afraid was something amazing to see. And it actually grew my faith a lot during that time, just spending time with him. And now I, I honestly do. I see my faith as, as a safety net that whenever things go wrong, it's there and I can fall back on that. Coming up, real life through basic art. Uninzi lekresha singa singa ngeta omnye umtu. Kodi kesi sita guba singa mkala ngapina. Our next guest showed us simply being there was enough. Doodle Your Future is a foundation like no other. Tell us how it started. I moved to Joburg about 10 years ago to pursue my career in acting. And within the first two years, I found myself in quite a, a dark space. You know, we all go through the, the valleys in life. The feelings of loneliness, it, it took me straight away to, to orphans and vulnerable children. And I found an orphanage and I thought, let me take my skills of acting and performing arts and theater because theater really is a powerful tool to heal people. And I went and I did my first drama class with these children. And a few days later, the MD of the orphanage contacted me and I thought, oh, here we go. She's going to tell me that the kids hated what I did, that I should stop acting, let alone teach them how to act. And instead she told me a story about a little girl that had just come into the orphanage and she had been abandoned. And she needed someone special to hold her hand and work and walk through this journey with her. Um, and I just said, okay, I'll be that person. And our relationship grew slowly over time. She hardly spoke. I spoke way too much. And one thing really stuck out, and it was her absolute fear of policemen and sirens and the ambulance. And she was so terrified. I think if she could crawl up underneath my skin to hide, she would have done that. And one day I asked her why she was so fearful and, and, and petrified. And she told me a story about how one day her, her dad was taken away in a police van and her mom in an ambulance. And then I realized how deeply pained this child really was. And so I did the only thing that I know, and, and that's to use storytelling and to share positive stories about the policemen and women and the ambulances and how they help people and what they do to, to make life better for, for all of us. Doing that process with her, today she's no longer afraid of, of police and sirens and, and the ambulance. It took a couple of months and that fear just completely dissipated. And that's when I think God like dropped the little seed and said, here we go, here's a, here's a, a little seed for you, Tammany, because it really showed me the power of theater and storytelling, positive storytelling, and how it does heal directly with an individual. I sat down with God and I was just like, I need you to show me what you want me to do with my life. That night I went to bed and definitely Jesus um, was watching that little seed overnight. You know, his timeline is different to ours. I woke up that next morning with Doodle Your Future. And I knew exactly what we had to do. We had to write and doodle good news stories, um, South African good news stories to share with South Africa. We had to develop these little children and they needed to learn the skills of positive thinking and believing that they have a purpose and that there is some reason that they're here regardless of what happened to them in their past. And we needed to get companies and people and everyone involved and start this good news revolution. And these little kids were going to be the, the creators of these stories. So Tammany pioneered Doodle Your Future, a unique form of art therapy, embracing and healing our forgotten children. Often they don't have the solid or nurturing foundations that are needed for them to have self-esteem and healthy self-esteem and believe that they are an important ingredient in our society. We invite these children, who we now have called our little doodlers, um, and they learn the art of storytelling, creative writing, illustrating, digital design, and we invite doodle heroes, who are like-minded companies, to come join us on our adventures with these children and give them the opportunity to write their company's stories. So these children are exposed to a world of possibilities through the eyes of 
incredible companies around South Africa. They're also creating relationships and having someone at the age of 17, 18, when they need to leave the orphanage and life gets very hard and tricky for these children at that, at that stage, they still have a relationship with a company because this company has adopted a doodler. So many other foundations are based on the practical day-to-day -day things kids are going through. Doodle is based on creativity. Why have you chosen that? The reason that art education is equally as important after the tummies have been fed is that positive storytelling ignites the imagination of possibility and positivity. And you are what you think. You become what you imagine. And if these children don't feel like they're worthy, if these children don't realize that they are important, they're going to become those things that don't shine a light on our lives, that don't have a positive impact. And that's why creativity is so important. So when they walk in that door, they belong. There's not one part of them that goes, I can't, I don't belong, I'm not worthy, I shouldn't be here. They go, oh, look, I can doodle, here's my picture. As much as it's about creativity, they actually are developing skill sets that will be used and needed in their future at the same time. What is the difference it makes in the lives of these children? We have a beautiful um, young lady who, I can see that she doesn't glitter or sparkle when she's doodling. So she's not that excited about it. And I sat with her and I asked her, what is it that she would like to do within Doodle Your Future? And she blew me away because she just said, I've had bad things happen to me in my life and I've chosen to make them good things for me and how to help other people. And I want these brothers and sisters of mine, all the other little doodlers, to learn how to turn the bad things into good things. What is your vision for your doodlers? to create and formulate relationships where when these children leave the orphanage, when they're out in the big bad world, they've got organizations to turn to. We, we forget that these children, they don't have moms and dads and aunties and uncles and connections here and there and, and opportunities. Um, I take that for granted. And these children need those relationships. And I hope that through this process with Doodle, we'll be able to create those relationships into the economy as well for them. I definitely know without a doubt that this is God's hand. Doodle Your Future, um, just the way it came to fruition and, 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 and has become what it is now, I feel God's joy, I feel his hope, I feel his love, I feel his patience when I'm with those children. So without a doubt, God's got everything to do with it. <laughs> Remember, you can see photos and articles of today's show on our Facebook page. You'll also find an exclusive clip on the Vista West plastic recycling plant. This tremendous plant pays for about 80% of the shelter's budget. <laughs> on that note, Nana Megan, Sisati Queen. Wait, I would love to see some horse riding from you. Nah, I'm going to go to Thanks for being with us this Sunday morning. Nibene Vic Emioli.